Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the Chemical Species Transport series. In this video, we are initiating discussion on reactor design or simulation of reactor in ComSol Multiphysics. In chemical engineering, we come across several kinds of reactors and the reactors can be different. It can have different characteristics and in order to design a reactor, Perfectly, you need to understand about the reaction that goes on inside the pattern of the reactor, whether it has a catalytic particles, whether it has a bed of particles, whether it's a purely homogeneous reaction or a non-homogeneous catalytic reaction. So every aspect is important. So for designing any kind of reactor, initially you need to know about the design of the vessel, you need to know about the chemical reaction that goes on, chemical reaction kinetics, catalytic rate, everything is important and that's why this is a complicated chemistry. So let us just go ahead. This is a design which is, this is a model which is available in application library of ComSol. This is porous reactor. If you search in the application library, you will be getting this porous reactor. So we are thinking that we should start with a module which is already there in ComSol. Then I will try to design all reactors, not all the reactors, the special kind of reactors like plug flow reactor or mixed flow reactor, CSTR or whatever. So in this kind of reactor, which is porous reactor, what are the physics necessary? So initially they have taken chemistry. So you can understand why chemistry is important because in a reactor, there might be multiple chemical reactions going on at a time. So you actually have the provision of enlisting all the chemical reactions under the chemical chemistry option. Okay, this is the physics. The name of the physics is chemistry. So here you can see they have noted down all the reactions and the parameters. That means the rate constants or and other parameters. If it's a reversible reaction, then it has forward rate constant. It has backward rate constant. Like the way you can say this is a reversible reaction. So they have defined Kf that is the forward rate constant, the backward rate constant. Overall rate of the reaction is uh, is defined as this. Uh, you can see this is Kf forward reaction rate constant. Uh, this is the multiplication symbol. That means if you have n number of components say C1, C2, C3. So multiplication of C1 into C2 into C3. And we actually know these things are experimental matter. That means chemical reaction kinetics, it comes from the experimental observation. So if you know about the reaction, then you can know about the reaction rate, rate constant and everything. And from those known parameters, you have to define it under the chemistry option. So this is a reactor wherein the hydrogen evolution and uh, and the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen goes like you can, if you see here so on this particular surface what's happening this is H2O on rhodium surface it is giving you adsorbed H2 that means you have a cat catalyst and if you put uh, water on top of that then the water molecules may be embedded on that catalytic surface. So if this particular process also has some reaction rate kinetics, so they have taken for this. If we look into some other reaction like this one, if you, you, you can see uh, this is a reaction between OH, maybe it's a radical and the H radical, which is giving rise to H2O on the rhodium catalytic surface. So you can see when uh, inside a reactor, there might be multiple steps happening. And if you know about those steps clearly, then you have the option to enlist those properties. So 
Our target is not to understand this particular chemical reaction which is given in the porous reactor of Comsol Multiphysics but to understand which are the way, what are the ways by which we can define a chemical reaction or a chemical reactor. So this particular physics which is chemistry uh, is taking care of the several reactions that goes on inside the reactor. So once we define it then we go for, so what's happening? This is not only the chemical reaction that takes place inside a reactor. There might be a flow coming in, there might be a flow going out. So an inflow and outflow. In the middle reaction is happening. So this inflow and outflow, that physics also we need to take care of. And that comes from this TDS, that is transport of diluted species in porous catalyst media. So this physics is available in COMSOL as this is a, I mean, this is a, this is a reactor and a porous catalytic reaction is taking place. So in COMSOL, there is an inbuilt option of porous catalyst. So they have taken this particular option. But today I'm not going into the details of the equations because in all of my videos, I emphasize on chemical, uh, on the equations. But today we don't have enough time to discuss about each and every equation because there are multiple equations enlisted. But I am just trying to initiate the discussion and from, from the upcoming videos, we will be taking several cases and we will do different case studies so that it becomes very easy to comprehend. So they have taken porous catalyst. So this is the part, I mean, in a reactor, there might be a particular zone where the porous catalyst is kept. So you have to define this particular zone. If you see, they have actually defined the catalytic portion. Now they have defined inflow, outflow. There might be multiple inflows. Like this case, they have two inflow and the conditions of the inflow may be different. You can see from those boundary conditions, inflow is different from the inflow two. And at the outflow, this is the outflow option. Now, this transport of diluted species, it takes care of the concentration throughout the reactor. There might be multiple components. So this particular physics takes care of the concentration of multiple components inside the reactor. But there is a flow associated with it, but this flow is not very similar to normal laminar kind of flow because the flow is happening through the through the porous media. So for that, in order to model porous media flow, we need an appropriate physics. And for this case, they have taken Brickman equation. So I'm just discussing, I'm just telling the name of the equation. Today, I'm not going into the details of the Brickman equation, but We'll study on it. We are studying those equations. So in the upcoming videos, I'll come with this physics so that uh, many people tell me to model porous media flow. So I started working on it. I'll be understand. I'll, I'll try to understand the physics in detail. And then in the upcoming series, I'll be talking about, I'll be more, I'll be making more videos on porous media flows. So today, uh, if we conclude the discussion, so in a ke chemical reactor, there are three things. One is there is a flow happening then the flow may happen through the catalyst bed. And for that, we need uh, a physics, which is coming from say Brickman equation for the concentration of different components inside the reactor. We need chemical species transport along with the porous catalyst that has been taken and in order to define the chemical reaction rates and all we need to take chemistry physics. So these three physics are very important and obviously there will be multi physics coupling because this Brickman equation solves for the velocity and this velocity is needed here in the transport of diluted species. You can see there is a term velocity. So these two physics should be coupled and you can see in multi physics they have coupled reacting flow. So Brickman equation and the transport are connected with each other.
so today it was an overview of chemical reactor design model and in the upcoming video will be coming ahead will be will be coming with different cases and the first case would be easier and then we'll keep on adding complexities into it so that you understand the reactor design properly.